Some nodes process one part of transactions, some nodes process some other part of transactions, and, and, and so forth. So this way, the capacity of the entire network can be much higher than the capacity of any one single node. Um, so we also are working on other strategies for uh, scaling, including uh, things like state channels, and <coughs> if you want to learn more about that, I would also um, recommend that you um, or research it on the internet. Um, so security. So as um, I mentioned before, I think uh, blockchains have three major kinds of security challenges. So one of them is the security of the protocol, and uh, Casper's proof of stake is one way in which we are trying to improve this. Another w uh, thing is um, security of uh, user interfaces, and a third thing is the security of uh, smart contracts. So security of programs that, that exist on top, and applications that run on top of Ethereum. So the um, main problem here is um, that there have been several fairly high profile cases where someone created a smart contract, so someone created a program, uploaded it, uploaded it onto Ethereum, and this program contained a, a, a large amount of money. But because the, the code in the program had a bug, so the code in the program had an error in it, someone, a, a hacker was able to, act to, uh, to access the program and, even, and withdraw all of the money and steal the money from themselves. So this, is, this um, has happened several times now. So the first major incident was uh, something called the DAO. Um, there was one that happened more recently, which was the uh, parity wallet hack. And these are, these, and so this, this shows that this is one of the major problems that has to be resolved if we want to have secure smart contracts. Um, so we're working on uh, several different um, approaches to uh, try to um, uh, resolve this issue. And I, mo most of them have to do with improving the, program the programming languages that people use in order to um, write, uh, write contracts that go onto Ethereum. So if you look at, um, so if you look at this code, this uh, smart contract code that I just showed you 20 minutes ago, so what's happening here is that this is a programming language, language called Solidity. And currently, most developers that write code for Ethereum write their code in Solidity. The code then gets compiled. And what gets uploaded onto Ethereum is something called EVM code. Now, theoretically, you do not, you do not have to write your applications in Solidity. If you want to use another programming language, you can use another programming language. And so, what our um, research team has been, uh, or, and many other people have been working on, is um, first of all trying to see can we improve Solidity? So can we make it so that programs written in Solidity are less likely to have errors, are less are are more likely to do exactly what they say they do, and and where it's it's, um, it's not so easy to find. Uh, find bugs in, in programs written, on, written in the language. So we have this, uh, as part of our efforts to improve Solidity, we have this uh, kind of thing called the um, underhanded Solidity contest. And part of, uh, of the goal here is that, the, the, well, the idea behind this contest is that if you can write a program in Solidity that, does, that looks like it does one thing, but actually does another thing, so that, let's say that looks like it's a DAO, but actually lets me take all the money out, then if you can write a program like this, then you win the contest and you get a prize. So the purpose of this is to try to work with the community and try to get a better understanding of what kinds of ways can people write accidental uh, code with accidental bugs or code that is deliberately misleading. And from there, try to use that in order to improve the programming language. Aside from Solidity, we also have one developer who is uh, working on a, another programming language that's called Bamboo. And um, there's also a language called Viper. And this is one that, that I've been working on for the past um, eight months or so. And the, so the goals of these programming languages in both cases is 
to try to make it more difficult to write code that is misleading. Um, or, and also to make it easier to catch errors, to make it more difficult to write code that does have errors. So, um, we um, uh, about two weeks ago, we had a you know, workshop in uh, Cornell University in the, in the United States. And the you know, Ethereum team, or many people in the Ethereum research team, worked with uh, researchers and academics from Cornell and from other places. And we, so, and we have actually collaborated on uh, some, some, some solutions and some improvements to contract security, scalability, and uh, various <coughs> other challenges that we have. So the, um, so the Ethereum Foundation, so the group that is, uh, has the mo uh, is currently paying most of the developers that are working on the Ethereum code, is actively working with universities, working with researchers, working with individuals to try to see if you know, we, we can work together to solve some of these challenges, you know, improve security, improve scalability, improve privacy in various different contexts. And from, um, from our work and from some of these collaborations, there already have been um, a, a quite a lot of results. And we expect to see more results in the future. Um, so, if um, anyone here is um, interested in just learning more about, uh, about Ethereum or uh, trying to get into Ethereum as a developer, then I would recommend to start off and look at these two websites. So look at ethereum.org. And um, ethereum.org contains some tutorials, some kind of guides that you can follow um, in order to learn how to write a smart contract, how to upload it, how to build an application. Um, the Ethereum wiki contains a lot of information, like more technical information about how the Ethereum protocol works. Um, and from there, you can, you can also find uh, a lot more resources. So. If, uh, you're, if people here are interested in creating a startup that uh, does something on top of Ethereum, then you are going to need developers. And developer, uh, in general, I would say it's actually not that difficult for an existing programmer to become an Ethereum application developer. I mean, we have deliberately tried to make the experience of writing smart contracts feel very similar to writing existing programs. Um, the, now, if you want to become an Ethereum core protocol developer, so work on scalability and security challenges of the Ethereum protocol, then this is much harder because this is still a very new field and the number of people that, under, that really understand all of the challenges involved is still very small, but it is also possible. And if else, anyone here wants to work with the Ethereum research team, then we are hiring too, and we are volunteers too. Uh, um, I mean, otherwise, I would probably, uh, I also definitely recommend uh, looking at and, wor and uh, working for uh, any of these Ethereum projects. So uh, I would say, that, like, in general, right, if um, there, there are de many different sides to the Ethereum community, and there are people who are involved in Ethereum because they're interested in the technology. There are people who wants to build things on top of it. There are uh, people who, wa uh, who wants to do research around it to try to understand what kinds of things can be built on top of it. And so it, and the blockchain space is, you know, even after nine years, I would say, still a young and still a, uh, a rapidly growing space. And there are many different ways to participate. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.